Hi everybody, my name is Scott Walls. For over 25 years, I've deployed ERP applications for some of the world's largest organizations. During that time, I've taught thousands of people just like you how to discover, use, deploy, and support Oracle's back office software. In this lesson, I'm going to teach you about Procurement Cloud's initiatives, qualifications, and assessments. Please note that this lesson is part of the Supplier Qualification course found within the Procurement functional area under the Discover menus. But before we get started, did you know that you could earn free Discovery badges for display on your LinkedIn profile just by watching videos like this one? You can. Stay until the end of this video and I'll show you how. Okay, so let's get started. Key topics for this lesson are as follows. What is an initiative? Initiative types. When are supplier suppliers qualified or assessed? Initiatives, so kind of capture the supplier profile. How are initiatives created? Who creates initiatives? And then finally, why are initiatives created? First topic, what is an initiative? An initiative is a self-service polling tool within Fusion. That tool can be used to determine if a supplier or group of suppliers is, air quotes, qualified, or to assess one supplier's qualifications relative to another supplier's. However, unlike external polling tools, the answers to all initiative questions are stored against that supplier's profile and can be used to update specific values on their profile. So in short, think about something like a SurveyMonkey or a Poll Anywhere, but the data isn't resident in that tool. It really ends up against the supplier profile. It's also worth noting before we move off that Oracle refers to the application as supplier qualifications. <clears throat> but the initiative is the tool to ask the questions that ultimately result in a qualification, which is largely a binary yes, no, or an assessment. And we'll talk about that here on the next slide. So second topic, supplier initiative types and subtypes. So in FPC or Fusion Procurement Cloud, there are two types of initiatives. And we've kind of talked about this, qualifications, and assessments. Qualifications establish qualification areas like insurance, and they may create groups of questions, the general insurance group of questions, the performance bond, partner, the DOE, what have you. They launch these initiatives to solicit answers to those questions or groups in self-service. And then they evaluate the answers as yes, no, but they get stored in what we call containers. So the container could be generic, meaning it's just a value stored against a profile, but I could also ask a question that goes into a qualification that becomes a business classification about, let's say, supplier diversity. Next, you can also have assessments. So assessments have a high order construct called a model. So services suppliers or public works suppliers or what have you. And then again, you have groups of questions and you can launch those initiatives to get answers to those questions, evaluate the answers, and then this time they may get a score. You could auto-determine it or determine it by grouping. Third topic, when are suppliers qualified or assessed? So we see our typical procurement flow with purchasing services on the top and then sourcing on the bottom. So when you think about purchasing, it's largely self-service and we already know who the supplier is. You could have some kind of qualification that re-qualifies suppliers, but it's less usual, if you will. But if you wanted to ask COVID questions or pandemic planning questions, then it may be independent of both of these particular processes. But where we see qualifications occur mostly is when we're getting ready to engage new suppliers and we wanna understand what their qualifications are. And so we can use the initiative tools. So I see that happen a good deal when we're registering suppliers because we've now brought on new suppliers. And when they do the registration, maybe we capture the information as part of the questions in the registration. They're the same questions. Or we may also say, look, 
we have a supplier, but they go across multiple lines of business. So each lines of business needs to ask specific questions to qualify their suppliers so they have separate initiatives. Fourth topic, what we'll call capture to profile. So whether it's a qual or an assessment, you may have a model for the assessment, but then you have areas where you have questions. And then supplier profile has different, we call, I call them containers, so fields where this data gets stored. And then ultimately the outcomes get stored against the supplier profile as a qualification. You can see those qualifications in sourcing. You can search suppliers by them. You can see all suppliers for a qual. You can see all quals for a supplier. Fifth topic, how are initiatives created? So what you see is really the same way that you would do in polling or surveying. Oftentimes you start with laying out what the questions are that you want to ask and then particularly whether or not you have any branching within those questions. What are the values? Are the fields required? Do you need can you use an existing container, meaning field, or do you need to create what we call a DFF, a descriptive flex field, so a custom field. And then you put that together in a spreadsheet, then you'll want to go inside of an initiative and create it. You'll also want they have a preview mode because Everybody makes the same mistake in the beginning. You create a required question, but it's really part of a branch. And so then that makes every other question within that branch required. It sometimes will require, like anything else, a draft walkthrough. But that's how those initiatives are created. And then they have a type as assessment or qualification. Topic six, who creates initiatives? So it's largely the sourcing team or category manager, if you want to call them that, but it could be a requester, it could be legal. And then who's the recipient? Bidders, suppliers, or let's say spend authorized suppliers and prospective suppliers. And then lastly, why? Well, we've talked about post registration, additional supplier information, right? When we use the line of business or the region, you also may want to perform supplier survey. We talked about that with the COVID or pandemic planning. You can also use these tools post conversion. For example, supplier diversity data structures in legacy applications are insufficient. So you don't want to convert that data. You could use the initiative as a way to go back out and query the suppliers to give you that data. And then obviously you may solicit big qualifications as part of public works or government work. And then you may assess to perform a relative ranking among your supply base. Okay, so let's recap. You should now understand the what, how, when, where, who, and why of supplier initiatives or qualifications or assessments. You should understand those initiative types and subtypes and a little bit of how or why, when you would use them. If you're still not sure, watch it again. It's free. But if you understand the material, it's time to move on to the next lesson in this course. So that's the end of this presentation, but hopefully it doesn't have to be the end of your learning journey. There are thousands of free videos just like this one. Remember, better content, better skills, better income, better life. We wanna help you get 1% better every day. Thank you for watching and have a great day. Okay, as promised, here are the five steps you can perform today to start earning free badges for your LinkedIn profile. Step one, navigate to panamir.com and either sign in or join now, it's free. Step two, in the upper left, under the Discover menu, select the course that you want to watch and get badged for. Step three, watch all of the different video lessons in that course. Step four, when it's complete, send your LinkedIn profile and the course you watched and your user ID to badges at panamere.com. And then sit back and wait for step five when we attach a badge to your LinkedIn profile.